So, all right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Uh, potassium. Can we improve our potassium management to try to find that opportunity for return on investment? Um, or is it still in our best interest to just apply 100% of our potassium dollars across every acre ahead of the planter? Um, potassium is a very unique beast. Uh, John Brecker from NDSU has a good paper, Google it, uh, has a good paper out there explaining the different types of clay and the potassium reaction, uh, what your experience is going to be depending upon that type of clay. And it's a great example that if I go in Minnesota here, if I go to the south or I go to the west, uh, them guys are going to have different experiences. If we all talked about our experiences on the comments section, of hey I, I tried this uh, these trials and here's how it came out you're gonna have some people that are like you know what I do crop remo rate removal every year and get a fa fantastic crop magnificent return on investment and I wouldn't even be scared to double that because I know I'll get that much of a better crop uh, right at the same time somebody else is gonna make a comment of I haven't put any potassium chloride on my field in 10 years and I am only getting better and so it, it you know you see that whenever you talk about fertilizer online you will see them and they're not arguing both guys are right because it's their experience it's their context uh, could we be pedantics and say well yes but uh, you could replace that potassium chloride with with a potassium sulfide and, and do better for your soil and, and maybe that way. Sure, but uh, point is is that you got the research explaining why we're all arguing with each other about potassium. <laughs> it's so um, when I started into this journey, you have uh, the University of Minnesota, granted their, their, their research would be a couple hours south of me, and they were they went from broadcast to ban they were doing them trials and comparisons and they got down to 40 percent banded compared to broadcast and they were still seeing uh either no crop loss or uh crop gain an increase in yield and you're like well that's really interesting and then you hear of a like a john kemp do the presentation that's saying well the over application of our npk products up front of the planter can be hurting our yields more than helping our yields. And you're like, okay, well that kind of coincides a little bit to what the U of M is saying. And then you got the University of Illinois, uh, you got Richard Mulvaney and many scientists before him saying that, hey, uh, this, this whole uh, yield-based removal rate thing is just a bunch of bull crap. Uh, the, the, you know, you do not need to fall for this system, learn to wean yourself off kind of deal. And so you, I'm all double pumped, like, ah, ah, this is going to be fantastic. And we started here on the home place, and the home place here uh, had good manure history, good management, uh, a non-issue for P and K. So we just went in and strip tilling at half rates and have it looked back. Uh, in fact, now, now that we brought cattle back to the farm, uh, we we won't be applying P and K at the home place here for the rest of my generations behind me. Um, when you're when you're putting out roughly ten bales an acre of hay that's being run through a cow, um, and what's not being run through the cow is still on the soil. Uh, you look at the numbers, you know, twenty and a forty roughly per ton of dry hay on P and K times ten, um, or not quite by ten. It'd be about about a seven to eight because uh, of dry matter conversion. Um, I mean, that is a tremendous amount of P&K on them fields, um, not to mention that you're adding the biology of the system to get it running. And, and then you've got uh, Dr. Elaine Ingham that is showing us that, hey, look, you know, biology can help you free up uh, potassium uh, and then <clears throat> BW Fusion is a company that is, is claiming to have products that can help actually help you increase that biology or bring in that biology to bring the unlock the potassium from your soil. 
and the potassium binds so hard. Um, so when I first started doing some trials here, you're just like, yeah, this is really great until it wasn't. And then you're just like, well, I wonder what, you know, yeah, why is my soil sensitive on potassium? So you keep going back to researchers. And I heard a, a Richard Mulvaney and John Kempf, I don't remember which one said, but they said if you are on low CEC soils, uh, you're going to still need to be adding some potassium. You're going to still need to really buckle down on that potassium management uh, because of that low CEC and you're like okay now that makes sense why I'm having a really hard time trying to pin down my potassium trials like you you, you do the same trial across many fields and it's like yep 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 nope like well what how come these three are nope and these are yep uh, when you're you you have zero correlation between a yield response and applied rate, uh, zero correlation between the soil test and uh, the crop sap test, uh, other than the fields that are a little low or they're, they're low on potassium um, with the droughts that we've had for the last several years, whether it's a, just a, a short-lived drought or a D4 like last year, uh, I, I, I've come to the conclusion that that's the big thing is that on these fields that we picked up, we're trying to get them going. So when we picked these fields up not too many years ago, uh, they were very poor on their pH and their potassium. They haven't seen a cow and they hadn't seen fertilizer in 30 years. Um, and so you're kind of seeing a love hate relationship with them fields. Uh, one year you you have just this wonderful crop and you're like yay you know it, this field's really coming alive and the next year with a little bit of a drought that field just shuts down and you're just like what in the tar nations and I think it's that them fields are just right on that borderline um, so our first investment dollars on them fields the pH is low the K is low our first investment dollars is in pH. Uh, good news for us, if we throw on a pH product, a lime product that comes out of northern Minnesota that has a lot of potassium with it, it's got ash with it. Um, and so the good thing for us is while I'm trying to build the pH on these fields, uh, I don't believe that it's in my best interest or the field's best interest to dump six tons of a product on a field uh, I don't want to end up making it go backwards more than I already am. Uh, so let's spread that out over several years. Um, but each application, we're, we're adding, you know, a hundred some pounds. Uh, if, we, if we take that six ton and, and do it over three years, by the end of them three years, we've still added, a, you know, almost a theoretical 240 pounds of potassium to that field. And we are also... Uh, still stripping our full rate. So with the potassium management for me here on our low CEC soils, it's not so much as just cutting a broad acre rate back. It's, hey, this field had cows. This field's got well over 300 on paper uh, potassium, and it has never slowed down. It has never given us a potassium problem. Let's move them dollars over to here uh, so we can try to build this field up. So we're building that potassium up uh, with the broadcast product that comes in the lime and we're building it by hitting it with a big rate through the strip till and we're coming in on foliar and the foliar has been such an eye-opening of the power that that foliar has. Last year D4 drought them fields are just dying. That potassium's locked up tight as a drum. You got 100 pounds in the strip. You got all that broadcast on top, and that plant is still dying from no potassium. And you come in with nine pounds of potassium, and that crop just, oh, just jumps to life. Just jumps to life. And you're like, okay, that is amazing at the power of a foliar program. Uh, we do have to take in consideration that with a foliar, we're also bringing in micros. Uh, micros are gonna really affect your P and K and, and nitrogen 
movement in the plant, so we're correcting them as well. Uh, but still, the, that's part of our management. And what a powerful result. So now after all the testing and, and the, they're not really seeing hard evidence of just like, this is exactly what you need to do with potassium, but at the same time, it helps us know how to deal with our potassium. Now in 24, we can see them fields need some, them fields don't. Everybody is getting a foliar program uh, for sure. Everybody's getting tested right at the beginning and multiple times throughout the season because with potassium, our corn and beans don't really need a huge gulp until the end of the year. So let's just monitor out throughout the season so when they do need that big gulp, it's there for them and uh, try and do the best we can that way. Um, that's all I got. I, I don't have a whole lot on potassium research here with me just because it's been such a kind of confusing journey with, within my own field to field comparisons, but then I can't quite replicate uh, what some of these uh, more optimistic, you know, Richard Mulvaney, I can't replicate what he's doing yet. I can't get to zero yet. Um, you know, other than I can buy none, but the cows are still my potassium resource. And so with that note, I'm gonna kind of leave on a confusing note and uh, you guys insert your experiences on this one. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry to not have a tremendous amount of words of wisdom other than do your own trials. <laughs>